Good afternoon, I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome to those of you watching online at onespotmedia.com. The St. James Municipal Corporation yesterday passed a resolution against the establishment of an independent commission of inquiry to probe the air quality and related issues at the Cornwall Regional Hospital in the parish. The resolution was passed by the 13 JLP councillors. The three PNP councillors who were present abstained from voting. The motion was brought by the councillor for the Montego Bay North Division, Northeastern Division that is, Charles Sinclair. In the motion brought by opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips on Tuesday, it was suggested that the commission would examine a determination of the extent to which the medical and non-medical staff of the hospital had their health compromised. Also, the extent to which family members and patients of the hospital may have been affected. The precise chemical or biological agents causing noxious fumes and the reason for the delays in the decision to evacuate the main building. But Senator Sinclair said a commission of inquiry is not needed. Things can be established without a commission of inquiry. Not in my cabinet, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, you have, you have PAHO, which is an international organization, which is independent. Nobody can tell them or influence them what to do. And you have other organizations that we can partner with to establish what is the concerns in the Commission of Inquiry request. Mr. Sinclair contends that having a Commission of Inquiry is only another way for the government to spend excessively. And if we're going to spend yeah. millions on Commission of Inquiry, I'd have prefer take the millions and put in the government in general. So, Mr. Chairman, they want, they want Commission of Inquiry they are going to debate it in another place to determine whether it's relevant. I am standing here to say that I am opposed to any commission of inquiry. And I am asking that we, yes. as local government representatives that are on the ground, know the situation, not wanting to play no politics, must say to the leader of the opposition, commission of inquiry is not necessary. There's more bloodletting in Westmoreland as an activist of the People's National Party was shot by gunmen in Negril yesterday morning. The deceased has been identified as Mickey Dawes. Information is that approximately 11.30, Mr. Dawes was on a construction site in West End Negril when men in a car drove up and inquired about him. TVJ News understands that when he was identified, the men discharged several rounds at him, killing him, killing him on the spot. His attackers took his firearm before leaving the scene. The number of road fatalities continues to increase following another motor vehicle crash in Clarendon yesterday afternoon. One woman is dead while seven other persons had to be hospitalized. The dead woman has been identified as 61-year-old Carol Beverly Roden of a Longville Park address in the parish. Information received is that about 3.30, a white Toyota Pro Box taxi and a grey Toyota Sprinter motor car were traveling in opposite directions along the Freetown Main Road in the vicinity of Rasta Corner, when it's alleged that the driver of the Toyota Sprinter failed to keep left and collided with the Toyota Pro Box taxi. Miss Roden, who was a passenger in one of the vehicles, died on the spot. The other seven persons were rushed to hospital, where four persons remain in, or rather were admitted, in serious condition. The Newton Primary School in St. Elizabeth was sent into mourning following the death of one of its students yesterday. The student reportedly drowned while swimming with friends in a pond. We have the details in this report. A casual swim turned sour Thursday evening after an 11-year-old drowned. The boy, identified as Duane Chambers, a grade 4 student of Newton Primary, met his demise while swimming in a pond in Haunton, St. Elizabeth. Reports are that sometime before 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Duane was among a group of boys on their way home from school when they stopped at a pond which had accumulated water following the recent heavy rains. Shortly after, he got into difficulties. 
A resident of the community, Leonard Palmer, says he was alerted to Dwayne's distress by the other boys. So then just come from school? Mm, just come from school and take off clothes. And he, he wanted to join his mother out there for a work and send him around the yard and then he go on and him hide and take shots and come across the common. I know come as a community in Britain. Principal of Newton Primer Marjorie Coke says Dwayne's death has affected the entire community. I try to cheer them up, give them little thoughts just to cheer them up but it is very hard. We were deeply attached to Dwayne. He was a special child. He was caring, loving. He was always punctual for school. Guidance counselors from neighboring schools had to be called in to provide support for students and staff at the institution. Jeline Pearson, TVJ News. The National Works Agency, NWA's communication manager, Stephen Shaw, has outlined the traffic changes which will remain in place for the next 16 months in the three miles area of San Andrew. We have restricted the right turning movement from Marcus Garvey Drive onto Spanish Town Road. Also, the U turning movement from Marcus Garvey Drive back onto that section of Marcus Garvey Drive, the, 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 the southbound section of Marcus Garvey Drive that is in the vicinity of the gas station and the police station. So persons now uh, will have to either go on East Avenue or they continue straight up Hagley Park Road. We have done this because we want to reduce the interruptions in the flow coming from the direction of Marcus Garvey Drive and the Portmore Toll. Trucks transporting bauxite from Mylegol in Manchester for bauxite company Jamalco were prevented from doing so for several hours Thursday afternoon. This as taxi operators and residents say the company has failed to deliver on its promise to patch the roadway. We need the road to be fixed. You understand me? I say? Because it's a morning if I, if I chuck and the taxi and lick up. You hear about taxi man this and taxi man because we need easy to call. So please, we ask you for some intervention right now. Member of Parliament for North West Manchester, Mikhail Phillips, says discussions have been taking place in regards to the patching work. He, however, noted that Jamal Jamalco seems to have sidestepped the community of Mile Gully. Where we find it a disrespect is that the Jamalco has signed a contract to start patching the road from Northeast Manchester, on the border of Northwest Manchester, all the way to Tollgate, where they are, where they are throwing off the the, the the bauxite, and not consider in patching the area that they are mining and hauling the bauxite from. The member of Parliament says they have been having meetings with Jamalco from February. But at this point in time, now that their word means nothing, and that my word. And credibility with the residents of Northwest Manchester is now being questioned. One public sector group is this afternoon calling for persons to desist from knocking the Vision 2030 development goals. More in this report from TVJ's Shane Masters. It's attainable. That's a charge from President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA Georgia War Richards. She was speaking about Vision 2030, the developmental plan which is to see Jamaica being the place to live, work, raise families and do business. She says persons must desist from saying the development plan will not work. And some skeptics might want to say that it is not realistic or it is not achievable. Those of us who are educators who write lesson plans, we understand reliability, we understand being specific, we understand being smart, we understand our objectives being time-bound. 
and we understand all the intervening factors that might intercept our objectives. The JTA president is therefore calling for all hands to be put to the wheel for Vision 2030 to be realized. We firmly believe as the world changes, as the game changes, as the change agents in this society, that with all hands on deck and with all teachers recognizing that we are integral to the achievement of this 2030 vision that indeed Jamaica will become the place to live, to work, to raise families, to do business and to, to retire. Mrs. War Richards was addressing teachers at the inaugural Teacher of the Year Award Ceremony of the Mandeville Primary and Junior High School earlier this week. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News. A dispute is brewing between fishermen in East Portland and the Alligator Head Foundation after two fishermen were arrested for fishing in the East Portland Fish Sanctuary. According to President of Draper's Fishermen Association, Lascelles Oakley, the men were in the protective waters because that's the only available route to access other fishing areas. He's blaming the Alligator Head Foundation, saying the entity went back on a promise that they would have provided additional resources to assist them. They promised us the boat to go out Saturday, sanctuary and fishing, right? From the first of uh, uh, April last year, they keep a big meeting down at the um, foundation headquarters, and we went there, right? And they've been promising us all different type of things until now none of the promises are fulfilled, right? And the last meeting I went down there, because three of us that went to that meeting and I met a new CEO that told me that he doesn't know anything about the boats that was promised. And he also told me like the, the more stiffer penalties that are coming on stream and um, that the foundation was not a handout, you know? So I, I don't understand what they uh, mean. What we can't get, we, we can't make the money. We can't, I mean, I said, see our lives out in out there. We go fishing and make with dollars, you know. And like we are from out of sea, so. And they promised us jobs, so I'm not seeing them giving a job. Then train some guys, I mean, out of the amount of guys that them train. Only one man me see, I work, you know. Only one man from me then get some work, so. I don't know what's going on. Mr. Oakley said legal action could be taken on the matter. We are planning to go to court with this man that they just they arrest because we don't know why they arrest him. They arresting a man innocently. innocently to fish in the sea out there that they take away from us and they didn't fulfill the promise that they were supposed to because that's our livelihood. Right? We never bring no war to them or anything like that. They come and promise us a lot of things and they don't fulfill any their promises. Deputy Superintendent at the Port Antonio Fire Station, Wendell Patterson, is appealing to citizens to desist from making prank calls or false alarms to the fire department. He was speaking at a municipal meeting in Portland yesterday. Mr. Patterson said, despite a decrease in the number of false alarms received this year compared to the corresponding period last year, there are still too many. When there is no call and we do get a genuine call, it sometimes will, well, it will endanger our, our firefighters, it will endanger the citizens, it will cause more damage on other person, and the very fact that it might be the same person that made those false calls, false calls um, might be their own family members or someone that is in need of the services of the fire brigade. Youths in Flanker St. James are being urged to take full advantage of a training initiative which was launched recently in their community. Speaking at the opening of the Flanker Skill Training Institute, Councillor for the Division, Senator Charles Sinclair, said the initiative is an avenue to deter young people from a life of crime. Well, this is just one of the processes that is happening and taking place so we can be a part of that transformation that when the state of emergency is up, we have persons who are certified, who live and come from amongst families, who can make positive contribution to families. 
He pointed out that the program will provide the trainees with equal opportunities to enter the world of work. This Frankers Institute, where it is inside of the community, you don't have to go anywhere, it doesn't cost you. What you will find that it will incur a cost on you is really your time. I'm putting your time and I'm certain that you will get the rewards for which you have made your investment. And it's time now for our fact or fiction feature. Today we ask fact or fiction. The Riverton City Dump is the only waste disposal site operated by the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA. Find out the answer at the end of the sports segment of the newscast. We go on to sports. Ten Antiguan and three Trinidadian drivers arrived for the first leg of the two-day Seaboard Marine Caribbean Circuit Race Championship to be held at the Jam West Raceway in Westmoreland starting on Saturday. Trishana McGowan reports. The famous BMW 2.8 series has been fast growing in the region and Antigua is where the buzz started, so the country will be represented by 10 drivers in the field of 16 competitors, with three each from Jamaica and Barbados. MacGyver Donilon and Ronald Spencer are the two leading drivers in the region, but over the past three years, they have only competed on dirt. The two who are the joint record holders in Antigua along with Janina Uenga, one of two female drivers, will all be racing on tarmac for the first time. I'm trying to get as much experience on the tarmac because uh, I've never experienced a tarmac because we are usually racing on dirt. So I expect to have fun and get the experience. I have a little experience on tarmac before but not as much as some of your seasoned drivers here or others coming from the other islands in the Caribbean, but um, our track in Antigua is primarily dirt. So we have a, a rally cross, rally sprint track in Antigua, and so this is something definitely new for us to get the experience and see how we can continue and follow the series through the Caribbean. And finally this afternoon, the answer to our fact or fiction feature. We asked, fact or fiction, the Riverton City Dump is the only waste disposal site operated by the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA. Well, it's fiction. The National Solid Waste Management Authority operates four waste disposal sites. They are Riverton, Retirement, West Kirkvine, and the Northeastern Waste Disposal Sites. Each site uh, serves two or more parishes to ensure environmental protection against solid waste diseases and pests or nuisance control. And that's the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.